All right, guys, so we got to talk about another story here that is about the decline of our society, specifically when it comes to Generation Z, okay? Who is the most entitled generation that I've ever seen in my life, okay? And this story right here is exactly what I'm talking about. As an NYU chem professor says he was fired after students complained that his class was too hard. Now, some of you guys may have heard about this story already, but I want to talk about it because I can actually provide some insights on the class that these students claim was too hard. Okay, uh, the subject is organic chemistry, which is notoriously a hard class no matter what school uh, you take the class at. Right. Uh, so I, I want to talk about this because, again, I, I think that this right here is a bad, bad, bad sign uh, from our you know younger generation and also from these academic institutions where you have a professor getting fired because essentially he's doing his job too well. Right. He's making the class hard. He's making the students work to earn their grade. And he's fired because of that. Right. He didn't make it easy on the students. Again, this is absolutely shameful stuff uh, that is happening in this country that we got to talk about. We got to address this stuff, right? Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and, and read about this. An NYU chemistry professor says he was fired after students complained his class was too hard. Maitland Jones Jr. says that despite decades of experience, the 80K a year school catered to students who were failing his organic chemistry class and canned him according to an interview in the New York Times. 82 of Jones' 350 students signed a petition against him last spring saying Jones had made his class too difficult and was at fault for their failing grades. Okay, um, <laughs> 82 students signed a petition saying that the professor's class was too hard, that it wasn't them that was responsible for their failing grades. It was actually the, the, the professor. And I'm going to tell you guys, here's the thing. This is how you know that these students are full of it. Even in a class like organic chemistry, uh, it is extremely hard to get an F, right, in any college class, right? You have to actively try to get an F. That means that you're not showing up. You're not doing homework. Uh, you didn't study for the test. Um, you have to fail on multiple levels to actually get an F, okay? Now, you can try a little bit. And get a C, right? Or you can try and get a C, especially in a class like organic chemistry. You can actually legitimately try and still get a C because the, the subject is that hard. But to get an F, though, right, means that you didn't try at all. You did not try at all. These, a lot of these students, I guarantee you, didn't even show up. They didn't even show up. Quote, students were misreading exam questions at an astonishing rate. Jones, who authored the 1,300-page textbook, Organic Chemistry, wrote a grievance to NYU obtained by the Times. Quote, in the last two years, they fell off a cliff. The 84-year-old professor said of the college kids' pandemic performance, quote, we now see double-digit scores and even zeros. Yeah, that pandemic <laughs> has made people lazy, okay? It's made people lazy. They don't really want to do any work. They don't really want to do anything. Because again, you know, here's the thing. When you're taking these classes online, like a lot of these students probably were, you can cheat. Right. You can open up your textbook, <laughs> you know, find the answers, whatever. You ain't really got to do all that much. But when you have to take the class in person and you can't use your textbook, you can't cheat. Um, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different ball game. So, again, I'm not surprised that uh, this happened after the pandemic because the pandemic has made a lot of people lazy. You know, generally in our society, they're used to not having to work. And again, it's something that we even see when it comes to the job market. Right. How employers had to offer, I mean, literally thousand dollar bonuses just to get people to come to work. I mean, we're talking about jobs like, you know, working in a restaurant or something like that. They're offering thousand dollar bonuses just to get people to work. So not surprising at all here. Not surprising at all. Quote, they weren't coming to class. That's for sure. Because I can count the house. Jones added, defending himself and saying the kids simply were not studying hard enough. They weren't watching the videos and they weren't able to answer the questions. In their petition, students said that, quote, a class with such a high percentage of withdrawals and low grades has failed to make students learning and well-being a priority. <laughs> I bet a majority of these students are woke. OK, I want to I wonder how many of those students are students of color. 
The students claim Jones' class reflects poorly on the chemistry department as well as the institution as a whole and said the professor addressed kids in a condescending and demanding tone. Oh, God forbid the professor have expectations of you, right? Wow. Absolutely incredible stuff. The students notably did not call for his firing and were surprised he was terminated. According to the Times, Jones appeared to be teaching at NYU on a contract after retiring from Princeton, where he was a professor. One of Jones' teaching assistants, Zakaria Bislami, defended his former boss. Quote, I think this petition was written more out of unhappiness with exam scores than an actual feeling of being treated unfairly. An NYU spokesperson said multiple students had complained about Jones's dismissiveness, unresponsiveness, condescension, and opacity about grading. His course evaluation was by far the worst, not only among members of the chemistry department, but among all the university undergraduate science courses. All right. So here's the thing. NYU and these students should be ashamed of themselves, okay, for getting this professor fired. A professor who authored a textbook on organic chemistry, right? He's clearly an expert in the field. He's been teaching for decades. He taught at Princeton before going to NYU. So the guy obviously, again, knows what he's doing. Uh, again, he's been teaching for decades. And all of a sudden, they're firing the guy because these students are complaining that his class is too hard. And here's the thing about organic chemistry, guys. And this is why this is so shameful and so wrong. Um, Organic chemistry is a class that is notoriously hard. And the reason why it's notoriously hard is not just because the subject in and of itself is hard. It is because this is a class that has to be taken by doctors. OK, before they actually can go to med school. And the reason why I know this and I actually have quite a bit of experience around organic chemistry because that used to be a big thing for me back in high school when I was in 11 and 12th grade. Uh, technically, I was in high school, but I actually really was in college. I was taking college classes and my friends who wanted to be doctors had to take organic chemistry. And we're talking about 17, 18 year olds was taking this class, right? Organic chemistry which is an extremely difficult class. And for them, it was extremely difficult, right? I mean, I, I remember the days of them sitting in the library all day studying for that class, studying for that class. It is not an exaggeration when I tell you guys that their lives literally revolved around organic chemistry and trying to pass that class, okay? I mean, again, I, I went to a uh, high school, right? That's supposed to be for smart kids, okay? Don't know how I got in, but... These kids, some of the smartest kids that I know, some of the smartest people that I know, um, they even struggle. They struggle. Some of these kids, they get all A's. They got C's, right, in organic chemistry, okay? That, that is how hard the class is. But again, the class is, is hard because, again, it is used to weed out students who actually aren't cut out to be doctors, who aren't cut out to go to med school. That's the whole point. In every prospective med school student, knows that they know that going into the class because most of those kids that are taking this class they aren't taking it because they want to be chemist right they're taking it because they want to go to med school and when they take that class they decide you know i don't really want to go to med school anymore which is exactly what should happen right it shows that you're not cut out to be a doctor we need to have the highest standards that we can for doctors but see what's happening guys is that they're dumbing it down even to be a doctor you have schools, guys, that have dropped requirements for the MCAT, right? They, they said, look, we're not going to rely on the MCAT, which is the test that you take to get, to get into med school, right? Um, we're not going to rely on that, and we're not going to rely on GPA as much because we want to fix systemic racism, right? We want more black doctors, right, and doctors of color. And they don't mean Asians, right, because Asians don't necessarily have this issue, which, again, in my opinion, is a shame because what's happening is that you're creating this perception that uh, so-called students of color, not including Asians, right? Um, they are not actually qualified or as qualified as white doctors or Asian doctors because they may have gotten to their medical school uh, without having to take the MCAT or without having a GPA scrutinized as much as everybody else, which is why I question, I wonder if these students that complain were so-called students of color, right? That's why I asked that question because this subject is something that I want to talk about before the past. I just never got around to it. This subject of the dumbing down of expectations for going to med school, for being a doctor, right? A profession that, again, we should only have the best of the best in. 
There is no room for dumbing it down or making it easier. There's no room for that. I don't care if all the doctors are white and Asian, right? I don't care. We cannot dumb down the standards. It's too much at stake. People's lives are at stake. And it's not even like you have to do that to have black doctors because I know a black doctor, right? Who worked very, very, very hard, extremely hard, extremely hard to get into med school. He deserves it. And I don't want his credentials questioned because they're dropping standards for black folks, right? I don't want that because I know that the guy is one of the smartest, most hardworking people that I know. But no, 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 no. These woke universities, this is what they're doing. They're saying no MCAT. We don't care about your GPA. We're going to fire professors that make organic chemistry, which is supposed to be a weed out class. We're going we're gonna to fire them, right? Again, this is shameful. Right. And this, again, is just another sign of the decline in our society. It really is. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.